the Lord be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to this morning's service as we celebrate the patronal festival uh, of St George's Church in Broad Oak, just on the outskirts of Heathfield itself. St George is, of course, the patron saint of England, and we celebrated his feast day on Thursday this week. Uh, and today we keep uh, the feast of St George as the patronal festival for St George's, hence the uh, red stole rather than the traditional white uh, of Eastertide. Though very little is actually known about uh, George, his story that has been passed down uh, to us through the generations is one of great courage and bravery in the face of huge personal risk. Legend, of course, has it that he slayed the dragon, a traditional representation of the devil, and that he faced severe persecution uh, for his Christian faith among the Roman people, not least the Roman Emperor himself. Such stories of valour uh, are not just a thing of the past, however. In our current times, we're hearing many stories of those who show great courage and bravery as they put themselves at personal risk on the front line, treating those suffering with COVID-19. And so this morning, as we celebrate St George and his heroic acts of courage, may we be encouraged by the example of today's heroes, the men and women whose dedication and commitment to the care of others is such an example to us all. So let us begin with the words of the prayer of preparation. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collect for St George. Let us pray. God of hosts, who so kindled the flame of love in the heart of your servant George, that he bore witness to the risen Lord by his life and by his death. Give us the same faith and power of love that we who rejoice in his triumphs may come to share with him the fullness of the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
I'm going to uh, try a bit of technology this morning and uh, sing together uh, the first of two hymns. Uh, the first hymn we'll sing today is Ye Choirs of New Jerusalem, uh, accompanied by the Choir of the Nation, uh, a, a recording made by the people at uh, St Paul's Cathedral, where various people have recorded uh, the hymns in their own homes, and they've uh, put it all together for us to sing along to uh, in our worship this morning. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Now on that same day two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing Jesus himself came near and went with them but their eyes were kept from recognizing him and he said to them what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God, and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. <clears throat> but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels 
who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My sermon today looks at two stories from the depths of our national history and explores the many parallels that they offer us in our current situation. It isn't a deep theological interrogation of the scriptures, but it will hopefully make some clear links between our faith and that of our ancestors that will offer us hope and encouragement in these times of great difficulty. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge my thanks to a gentleman called John Clifford, the author of a small book that was lent to me recently about the outbreak of the plague in, I think it's called Iam or Iam, a small village in the Derbyshire Dales. But before I come on to talk about Iam, let me firstly turn to St George, whose uh, feast day was kept on Thursday and whose patronal festival we celebrate in the benefice today for St George's Church in Broad Oak. St George's Day very often goes unnoticed in England and there are uh, few if any long-held traditions to celebrate like say those for St Patrick in Ireland or St David in Wales or St Andrew in Scotland. Each of those have very distinct characteristics to their celebrations of their patron saints. Traditionally, patron saints have two main purposes. Firstly, being role models to us. George, as we've already heard, remained firm and courageous in his Christian faith in the face of severe persecution by the Roman Emperor. Whether or not he actually slayed a dragon is perhaps less important than the legend itself, which speaks to the character of our national identity, a nation that has always prided itself on its ability to persevere in the face of adversity. And secondly, it is the tradition of many Christians, though by no means all, to ask saints in heaven to pray for us. The church isn't just made up of those who are on earth now, but includes all the Christians who are in heaven. They're known as the greater cloud of witnesses with Jesus at its head. St George 
continues to offer us a figure of great hope and inspiration, especially in these challenging times when we are in such need of reassurance that we will come out of this the other side and that we'll do so stronger and more united than before. Leaving St George to one side for now, let us move now to the small village of Iam that lies in the hills of the Derbyshire Dales, close to the towns of Matlock, Chesterfield and Buxton. Although not a postcard, picture postcard village, it attracts thousands of tourists each year because of a story of heroism and self-sacrifice that's over 300 years old, but continues to speak powerfully to our situation today. The parallels between their story and ours today are quite striking. In 1665, the arrival of a box of used clothes from London at the house of a tailor brought the plague to this remote Derbyshire village. Within three weeks, six villagers from neighbouring houses had died. The fear and alarm amongst the inhabitants must have been huge. After an initial peak, the situation began to improve, with records showing that in April and May of that year there were no deaths recorded for 21 days, a sign of hope for the plague-stricken village. But that hope was short-lived, and it was soon realised that the situation was in fact worsening. There were two clergymen in the village at the time the young 28-year-old rector and a previous rector of Iam who had returned to the village that year. Despite their diametrically opposed theologies, they put their differences to one side and worked together to form a scheme for the crisis-hit village and its inhabitants. It was a scheme that would tell a story of courage and self-sacrifice for centuries to come, and ultimately led to the death of so many of the villagers. The scheme involved some key decisions that were put to the villagers by the clergymen and agreed upon by them all. These included the decision to keep the church building locked for fear of spreading the plague by crowding together to worship worship instead took place outside in the hills. They also decided to impose upon themselves a minimum distance of 12 feet in order to minimise the risk of spreading the disease from person to person, an early version of today's social distancing measures. The other decision they took was an act of great self-sacrifice. They imposed a cordon around their entire village in an attempt to prevent the spread of the plague beyond its boundaries. Having given their word to stay within the village and not to venture out, the residents sealed their fate. A small village community, deeply rooted in their Christian faith, took the unimaginable decision to isolate themselves totally from the rest of the world in order to protect the lives of others, people they didn't know, in places they had never heard of. Their self-isolation was remarkably effective, with no deaths from the plague beyond the boundaries of the parish. Isolated from the outside world, the villagers waited quietly for their fate. Although it's hard to know exactly how many of the villagers survived, it is understood to have been just a tiny percentage of the pre-plague population. By the end of 1666, after 14 months, it was all over quite suddenly and life began to return to some form of normality. 
in both the story of St George and the story of that small Derbyshire village, we have examples of heroism and self-sacrifice, of extraordinary faith and courage in the face of adversity. Both stories come to us from the depths of our national history, yet are as alive and relevant to us today as they were all those hundreds of years ago. They're stories that carry not only parallels with our current situation, but also a great deal of hope. In knowing the strength of faith with which these villagers made such an act of self-sacrifice, we are encouraged to hold even firmer to the faith that we have, inspired by their example. In recalling the story of St George, who was martyred for his faith, we're encouraged to hold fast ever more strongly to the faith that is in us. A faith that tells us we do not walk this unfamiliar road alone, but with the risen Jesus at our side every step of the way, just as Cleopas and his friend did on that road to Emmaus. It's perhaps not always apparent that God is with us. We often fail to recognise his presence with us in the midst of pain and suffering and grief. But he is not absent. He continues to reveal himself to us today. His love continues to strengthen us and give us hope. Despite the fear and grief of today's pandemic, it is love and hope that have the final word. Amen. So let us declare together our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so we come to our time of uh, intercessions and our prayers this morning have been prepared uh, by Terry Bruce, uh, a regular member of our uh, St Richard's congregation. So my thanks to Terry for uh, the prayers this morning. So let us pray. We are in the presence of God, who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain and heals our wounds. Lord Jesus Christ, in dying you conquered death and rose again in glory. May we make each day of our earthly life worthy of your great sacrifice on the cross. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we pray for your church throughout the world. As we experience churches locked and public worship curtailed, help us to engage and experience new ways of worshipping you. In isolation at home, in private worship, through services broadcast via the media, for IT methods of downloading worship and joining in with prepared sessions from our clergy. Prosper the life and work of your church in this place as we seek to support each other in our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, raise up and sustain rulers, leaders and people of integrity for the responsibilities of government, especially as they face unprecedented problems in our world today. In our own country we pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, that you may grant her strength to continue to serve so faithfully. We pray for our Prime Minister that as he prepares to return to her Parliament this week, and all members of Parliament that they seek to find just and peaceful resolutions to the problems they face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, the sick and infirm were brought to you for healing. We hold before your tender love all those who need your healing touch today. We pray especially for all that are suffering from the coronavirus in our world. Strengthen and protect all medical, nursing and caring staff. We pray for all who are ill in our benefice, those who have asked for our prayers and those whose needs are known by you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God and loving Father, we commend to you all who have died and entered paradise, where there is joy without sorrow, peace without end, and life for evermore. May we all attain to the resurrection and find a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, comfort all those who mourn for loved ones whom they see no longer, for the recently departed, and those whose anniversaries fall at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge your constant care over our lives. We know that doesn't mean a life absent from trouble, but rather a life held close, close by your love and your presence. May we live confidently in the assurance that you are always with us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father, and in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing for ever the hymn of your glory. Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, who gave us this holy meal in which we have celebrated the glory of the cross and the victory of your martyr George, by our communion with Christ in his saving death and resurrection, give us with all your saints the courage to conquer evil and so to share the fruit of the tree of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Just before our final hymn and uh, blessing, uh, just to say thank you for joining me this morning for this service um, and to remind you that every weekday we are broadcasting live on our Facebook page at nine o'clock in the morning uh, a short time of prayer and reflection and those are all available on our website uh, by 10 o'clock each day so do uh, catch up with those if you've not been able to so far uh, and we'll be back here next Sunday uh, at 9 30 on Facebook and then later available on the website uh, so uh, we come now to our final hymn. I just need to switch my speaker back on again. Um, there we go. And uh, this hymn is a favourite for uh, St George's Day, uh, Jerusalem. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all those you love and pray for this day and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.
Alleluia, Alleluia.